auto lovers, welcome back to Ari Moto Show channel. We hope you guys are doing well. Today we're gonna show you 2023 Renault Arcana walk around and review, and explain the details of the car. We hope you guys enjoy it. Please don't forget to subscribe for more videos. Thanks for watching. If you fancy a sporty looking coupe SUV, your only options used to be big, posh German cars like the BMW X4 and Mercedes GLC Coupe, but the Renault Arcana changes that. You can think of it as a slightly left field alternative to cars such as the Skoda Karak or the Nissan Qashqai. If those cars are a bowl of porridge for breakfast, the Arcana is more like a pain au chocolat. It may not be as sensible, but it's a more exciting option. The front end will be familiar to any Renault fans out there, thanks to the C-shaped LED running lights, and you get LED headlights as standard across the range. It's the side profile that really sets the Arcana apart, with a swoopy coupe-esque roofline lending it a sporty edge over alternatives. This may look cool, however, it doesn't do much for interior space. While those up front won't have any trouble getting comfortable, thanks to plenty of adjustment in the seats and steering wheel, the back seats aren't quite so accommodating. Headroom is pretty limited and there's not much in the way of legroom either. A Skoda Karak is a better bet for carrying people on a regular basis. It may not be the most practical cabin, though at least it's well made. There are plenty of plush materials to be found, and everything feels well screwed together. The metallic feeling dials for the climate control are a particularly welcome addition, However, it doesn't have the design flair of a Peugeot 3008. At 480 liters for the hybrid model, the boot is a decent size, and the seats fold totally flat to make carrying longer items easier. It's just a shame there are no clever features like a 12-volt socket or some hooks for your shopping bags. As for interior cubby spaces, you get an average glove box and some large door pockets, but that's pretty much it other than a pair of cup holders and a small cubby under the armrest. What the Arcana lacks in interior space, it more than makes up for in standard equipment. Even entry-level Evolution models get a 7.0-inch touchscreen with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, rear parking sensors with a reversing camera, keyless entry and lane departure warning. Step up to the Techno model, and you get a better-looking 9.3-inch screen. Engine-wise, you have two choices. There's a 1.3-liter petrol mild hybrid or a 1.6-liter full hybrid. If you're after a diesel SUV, you're out of luck here. Take a look at the Citroen C5 Aircross instead. That said, the 1.6-liter hybrid will return almost 60 miles per gallon, and a week with the car saw an average of 54 miles per gallon. The Renault Arcana may not be the most practical SUV on the market, however, it's still worth considering if you're after a sporty-looking SUV with plenty of standard equipment and good fuel economy. The Renault Arcana has a RRP range of 26,895 pounds to 34,195 pounds. However, with CarWow you can save on average 3,921 pounds. Prices start at 22,902 pounds if paying cash. Monthly payments start at 273 pounds. The price of a used Renault Arcana on CarWow starts at 20,400 pounds. The Renault Arcana undercuts the Peugeot 3008 on price, however, it's slightly more expensive than the Skoda Karak and Citroën C5X. You'll have to pay a premium if you want the E-Tech hybrid model as well, however, it is very well equipped for the money. All cars get 17-inch alloy wheels, cruise control, lane departure warning with lane keeping assist and a 7.0-inch touchscreen with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. The midrange Techno model represents the best value, thanks to the larger 9.3-inch screen, adaptive cruise control, blind spot monitoring and 18-inch alloy wheels. Driving in town is pretty stress-free in the Renault Arcana. It always starts in all-electric mode, meaning you can glide around in silence and it gets off the line at decent pace. Handy for pulling out at busy junctions. You may find the suspension to be on the firm side and things can get a bit unsettled over broken surfaces. It's by no means uncomfortable, but something like a Kia Sportage is better at handling bumps in the road. You have a B-mode for the gearbox in the hybrid model which essentially means you hardly have to touch the brake pedal around town. The car will use regenerative braking when you lift off the accelerator to slow you down and put energy back into the battery.